Edge at 11 starts now. We had a nice warm up today, but now we have a chance for some storms tomorrow. Yeah, Captain Rich Litterman is watching the radar. Rich, uh, how strong are these storms you're talking about? Well, they could pack a punch late in the day on Tuesday into early Tuesday evening. I'll show you where this big storm is. Still snow on the backside through parts of Kansas and Nebraska. Certainly some snow in northern Minnesota. But notice the big storms right now down in Mississippi. All the rain streaming up into Chicago and Milwaukee. So we have a good chance to see rain develop in our area before sunrise. So plan on a wet commute tomorrow morning. I'll show you on the wintry side of this storm, a bullseye of accumulating snow in northern Minnesota. But here's that severe weather outlook. Now, these are not expected to be severe storms, but certainly a stronger storm possible around Saginaw, Grand Rapids to Fort Wayne, including southeast Michigan. How about some live pictures right now? Chicago, it's all rain there. Uh, Michigan Avenue, that's for sure. Temperatures in the 50s. We had highs today in the middle 60s. We had a chilly weekend, but today things did warm up nicely. 64 for us, 65 in Lansing, uh, 66 down there in Hillsdale. So the numbers at the airport, 64 and 33. It was chilly this morning. Here are your averages, 50 and 31. Certainly no rain today, but tomorrow we will likely see showers come and go. The rest of tonight, the clouds will thicken. The breeze continues. A lot of us are near 50 degrees, give or take a few, but that breeze continues out of the south and east. That will pick up again tomorrow. Notice the colder air building on the west side of this storm. 32 in Ironwood, 35 up there in Minneapolis. 60 degrees Fort Wayne, 61 to our south in Columbus. But certainly warm air east of the front. Cold air on the backside. 22 in Denver right now. Watch what happens with Fox Futurecast. There goes low pressure shooting off to the north and east. I'm going to stop the animation around 5.30 tomorrow afternoon. And you can see that line of storms quickly racing across Metro Detroit. And some of those will have some gusty winds. Then it's cooler for Wednesday and Thursday. So tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, we'll be keeping our eyes to the radar for sure. You can do it with the Fox 2 weather app. Down to 44 tonight. The showers come before we get to sunrise. Tomorrow, not an all-day soaker, but the rain comes and goes with thunder possible. And then notice, cooler days ahead for Wednesday, Thursday, a dry-looking Easter Sunday. And you can always get the latest forecast. Check it out, the Fox 2 weather app. You can download it for free in the App Store or in Google Play. Roop. Rich, thank you. Well, tomorrow, the man accused of assaulting and raping two elderly women in a random attack in Dearborn will face a judge on new charges. This time, 52-year-old Michael Holcomb will be charged with the sexual assault of a 13-year-old girl in Allen Park. It happened at a home on Meyer Avenue. Holcomb allegedly attacked the teen on March 17th, just hours before the assault of the elderly sisters in Dearborn. Allen Park's police chief calls this one of the worst cases he's ever seen. Holcomb is set to be arraigned tomorrow. Tonight, an hours-long standoff in Royal Oak is finally over. You saw police move in live on Fox 2 just about an hour ago. Fox News' Dave Kinchin has more from the scene. It happened moments ago. SWAT team saying go, 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 go. And they rushed into this home at Whitcomb and Campbell here in Royal Oak after a standoff that lasted about three hours. We're showing you video of them going in right now. This was a tense situation with police and uh, neighbors watching. Uh, neighbors watching from a distance as police kept everybody back for at least about three hours here. At one point, there was a man who we believe is the center of this standoff, a man who was on the porch with a couple family members uh, shouting at police for some time. We couldn't really make out what they were saying. He then at some point goes back in the house and then there's more watching and waiting and then SWAT teams decided right before we went on the air, mere seconds before we went on the air at 10 p.m., they said go, 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 and they moved in very quickly and we understand at 10 13 p.m., according to Royal Oak Police, that's when this situation was resolved. Peace Peacefully, uh, we don't believe that there were any injuries. We're still waiting to get some information on that. But from what it, uh, what we understand now, this situation was resolved uh, as peacefully as it could have been after a standoff that went on for three hours. Neighbors say that this family in that house, uh, that they have great relationships with that family. One neighbor said that at one point, uh, police had been to the house for various reasons about three times. That's what a neighbor uh, told us. This all happened right across the street 
from Bishop Foley Catholic High School. The high school putting out a statement saying that this incident is not related to the high school, that all students and staff are accounted for. Again, the situation as of now, the situation resolved uh, peacefully, according to Royal Oak Police. They say they will have more to say about this incident tomorrow. Dave Kinchin and Royal Oak on the edge. A murder suspect from Wyandotte has been caught, but not before lighting himself on fire. This happened in Akron, Ohio. Song Ho Jin was tracked down by police, wanted for his girlfriend's death over the weekend. She was found stabbed to death in an apartment on 10th Avenue in Wyandotte. After a brief chase, the suspect resisted arrest and set himself on fire before bailing out of the car. He's in critical critical condition with severe burns. Well, an attempt to make homemade fireworks goes wrong, damaging a house and sending a downriver man to the hospital with serious injuries. It happened on Cora Street in Wyandotte. Police say the man was trying to make fireworks in his kitchen Sunday night when the explosion happened. We're told he suffered serious burns to his hands. An Amazon delivery is normally a welcome sight. We get excited about it, except when you find that delivery driver inside your home. Yeah, Tara, this was a very unexpected surprise for a local man who was getting dressed for work. Fox News' Jessica Dupnag joins us live with a story. Uh, just what happened next? Well, first of all, it happened in Farmington Hills, and it didn't help that the homeowner, David, was in his boxers when he got this special visitor, let's say. Now, I want to give this uh, Amazon driver the benefit of the doubt here, but I just can't quite figure out why he would open the door and put the package inside. As I'm in my bedroom changing, I hear the front door open, and I think it's the cat getting out. Not the kitty. Instead, a full-grown man, ski mask, and Amazon vest. But as I come around the corner in my socks and my boxers, I see a man halfway into my house, <laughs> ski mask on, taking pictures. David Boggs in boxers and socks on a Tuesday afternoon changing for work. There's the package he was delivering right here on my doormat inside of my house. The Amazon driver took the welcome to our home site way too literal. I make eye contact with him. He looks at me and his words are, oh, uh-oh. He quickly just closes my door and beelines it. Was the driver on autopilot? Was he casing the place? What are you doing opening somebody's door? You don't know what's behind that door. It could have gone south in so many ways. Exhibit A and B. They're both super gentle. Yeah, but I mean, look at them. Worried about the things that could come if they had bit him. Now I'm the one in trouble, even though he's in my house. In fairness, though, the package of eclipse glasses for next month's solar eclipse was exactly what David Boggs ordered. But on the porch would have been just fine. He took his concerns to Amazon corporate. We can all imagine how that went. After an hour of talking to her, she offered me $70 with the recommendation to buy a home security system with it. With a link to purchase on Amazon. But of course. I mean, I thought it was safe to leave my main door open with my screen door closed. Apparently that's not safe anymore. David a little frustrated with Amazon, obviously. He did file a police report with Farmington Hills. Amazon tells him, though, they're really not going to do anything. That's because the driver didn't do anything violent and didn't steal anything. Reporting live, Jessica Dupnak on The Edge. Yeah, you do have to wonder a little bit about why someone would be wearing a ski mask and why they would exclaim that they were surprised or startled when somebody who owns the house walks up and says, what are you doing here? That's kind of strange. And also, you wonder, Jessica, uh, about the timing of the delivery. It wouldn't be hard for Amazon to figure out who that driver was based on delivery routes. Yeah, not at all. And, Rupe, you know, you've probably had this at home. The guy showed up in an unmarked vehicle, mm -hmm. too. Right. So that was a little alarming, plus the ski mask. It was 40 degrees, not necessarily ski mask weather. All right, interesting stuff here. Jessica Dupnack for us live tonight. Thank you. Well, a financial milestone for the city of Detroit to tell you about. A decade after declaring bankruptcy, the city has achieved an investment-grade credit rating. Moody's Investment Services citing a decade of solid financial performance for the historic increase. Over the last 10 years, the city has gained 24,000 jobs and property values have spiked 94%. The success has helped put Detroit back on the map. When the emergency manager left in 2014, there were a lot of dire predictions. Everybody in America is now recognizing the city of Detroit's financial comeback. And this is the city's first time with investment grade status since 2009.
this court can tell you we are doing cutting edge manufacturing in the smallest of towns in the most northern part of the state of Michigan. Marsh Madness excitement coming to Detroit this weekend. Here's the first look at when the Sweet 16 and Elite 8 court looks like right now. This hardwood made in Michigan, cut from maple trees in the UP and crafted at a small factory. Connor Sports has shipped products around the world, including right here at LCA for the men's Midwest Regional Games. Starting Friday, Gonzaga will face off against Purdue at 730. Following that game, Creighton will play Tennessee.